So welcome to a webinar talking about the new EasyChat vocabulary, which will be launching this month. We're going to explore the EasyChat core and the EasyChat spell vocabularies. We're also going to talk about the other uh, EasyChat family of vocabularies, including EasyChat Play and Explore. And as I say, these will be available in your devices to download in hopefully two to three weeks time. We're just waiting for the official release date. We were hoping it was sooner, but we're just waiting for a few more tweaks to appear. OK, so as I said, my name is Mark Street and I'm one of the consultants, along with Jackie, who's another consultant uh, and Mick as well, who is also a consultant. But you can feel free to contact me at any time. My email address is mark at liberator.co.uk. You can WhatsApp me on 077 47 016 660, or you can just do it the good old fashioned way and give me a call. We have got the chat running. So as we're doing this live on the 4th of June, that is live. If you're obviously watching this on playback, then that isn't going to be a feature that you'll be able to take advantage of. So the first thing I want to do is introduce you to EasyChat. EasyChat is a vocabulary that, in fact, was first created by myself back in 2015. It was a vocabulary that has evolved a lot over the last five years. And in fact, I've had some help of many, many good people in the field of AAC, many professionals in the field of AAC, uh, Jackie included, who is my colleague here, who has contributed amazing towards the input and development and creation of EasyChat, but also you as well. We've received a lot of feedback and we've listened to lots of comments and we've tried to make it as intuitive and as easy as possible. So EasyChat is a range or a family of vocabularies that is available in the Accent devices. So in the Accent range of devices, you can't buy EasyChat in its own right and put it onto any other device. It only works on the Accent device. And we do that in an eight inch, a 10 inch and a 12 inch device. EasyChat is available in a variety of symbol sets. And that would be PCS or board maker, depending which one you want to call it. It can also be available in widget symbols and also in symbol sticks as well. It comes in a variety of different sizes. And when I talk about sizes, we're talking about the number of buttons that are on screen. And you'll see here from the screen that I've got in front of me that we do it in a 15, a 28, a 36, a 45, a 60 and an 84 location. I'm going to start with the 15 location to begin with. And by pressing that button, it takes me into the 15 location Easy Chat Core. The version I'm showing at the moment on screen is in fact the widget version, so it's using the widget symbols. The widget symbols are an extra cost. I don't have the exact cost with me at the moment. It's not too expensive. Easy Chat in itself is free. If you have it with symbol sticks, then that will be included as part of the cost. But if you want to use it with widget or PCS, um, I don't think it's any more than around £150, but I will check that out for you. As I say, that will give you the symbol sets to use not only with an easy chat, but you have also the full access to the widget PCS board maker symbols as well. OK, we've made some changes to easy chat and this is version eight. We try very hard not to make significant changes to easy chat over the development and creation. However, like I said at the beginning, this vocabulary is a vocabulary system that has evolved and we have learned many things along the way in creating this. I think this change that you're about to see is definitely for the better. And what we've actually done in developing the one through to 45, sorry, the 15 through to 45 location is we've actually mapped it against the language stages that you can find within the AAC Language Lab. I will in fact share those language stages with you when I send a certificate out for your attendance today on this course as well, and I will make a note for you. I will also send you a list of manual boards that we have available, and I will show you those 
on our website as well. So I'll send you the Language Lab stages and the manual boards along with the, um, the certificate of attendance and anything else that we reference today. If you're watching this back on playback, you won't be entitled to the certificate, but you will be entitled to those resources. So do give me an email, marketliberator.co.uk, and I will send you those that information. Okay, so because we've mapped this against the Language Lab stages, the first point to make is that we haven't tried to populate or to cram, maybe is a better word, all the vocabulary into a 15 location vocabulary set. Simply, it would be a navigational nightmare to have to go through this multi-layered system at 15 locations. With an easy chat, when we give you a 15 location program, all the pages that go through that system remain 15 location. You can't, well you can, but we don't want you to go in and mix the page sizes because I think that makes navigation complicated and if access is different, maybe you're using a switch or a key guard, it can obviously cause issues in doing that. So every page I go into, if I go into my topic pages here, it still goes into a 15 location. If I choose my drinks page here in the top right corner, that will also go into a 15 location page as well. And as I scroll through this, you'll see that I do have a more button page. So I've got words in alphabetical order. I can scroll through and I can say water. And you'll notice that that page will then go back to the default home page. And that is done intentionally. Just to let you know, Jackie's just let me know that PCS is in fact £160 plus VAT and the widget is £250 plus VAT. Although I did think the widget had changed. So I might look into that one and just see if that is correct. But again, if you want further information, just contact us at Liberator, we can, uh, we can verify that for you. Okay, so you'll see that by going into the topic pages, I'll go into food on this occasion. When I go into the food, there is a hold button. This in fact does let me select multiple buttons, so I can press hold, and now I can say chocolate and crisps. And with that, I can press the home button and go back to the home page. So as default, when you're going into a page, it's closing that page to minimize navigation, crisps, and therefore minimize the number of hits that you're having to do to get back. So that is the default setting. You'll see here that we've got some high frequency words on screen. Again, we are minimum, we are our opportunity to present those words are few because we only have 15 locations. If I select the word play, you'll notice that the word ball does in fact appear and it does give me the ing form to use. So there is some morphology in here, but there isn't all that morphology in there. We only have the ing form. I can say the word playing or I can say ball. So I could say I play ball and that will close down. If I want to choose another toy or something to play with, I can say I play and go into my toys category. And incidentally, notice where that category opens. It's opening where the play was. So again, we're thinking about the consistency and the motor planning. I'll press toys and I can say bubbles and that will close again. Notice when I go into the topic pages, notice that toys and places are color coded in a blue button. That's just to highlight their positioning because that in fact appears where toys is or the word play is, and this appears where the word go is. So again, we're drawing attention to its location. Now, us, there is other parts of speech. We've got a more core button here and I can navigate here and you'll notice that we've got more actions more describing words, more positional words, our little words and social, people, determiners. So there are other parts of speech available in here, but we have to navigate through several layers to get to those buttons. We found that simply putting that actions button here would restrict those high frequency words. 
And at 15 location, we wanted to give you some keywords to use. So in order to find another verb, I'd have to press topics and more, and then go into verbs here. However, if you wanted to move that and make it a word accessible at fewer hits, I can right click with a mouse, I can cut that out, I can go back into my topics pages, and I could replace something else. So I could say, actually, I'm going to move TV and put that somewhere else. Let's assume I've done that. And then I could paste my verbs here. So let's just paste that in. There it is. And now that gives me access to my verbs much quicker than it would previously. So I can now go topics, more verbs, and say the verb drink. And then it will give me that verb drink juice. So you can see how that's coming up as well. Now you'll see where the square originally opened for drink, and that was because when I go into the verbs, that's where drink was. But that just gives you an idea. So I'm gonna move straight on with you. I'm gonna press this menu button here, this little cog in the top right corner, sometimes called uh, menu or home or tools button. When I press that, we've got a nice simple navigation through Vocab Wizard. And when I press that button, I can go to the next location size, Easy Chat Call 28. So I'm going to go into the 28, and what you'll see there is the layout becomes very similar to what you saw in the 15. Your pronouns are colour coded in yellow. That's the Fitzgerald colour coding system, and they're over toward the left hand side. You've got the helping verbs, which are a lighter green. So the green tend to be representing verbs in Fitzgerald. So here we've got our green across there, ranging from do, drink, eat, feel, go, help, and below, like, play, put, stop, turn, and want. In that top corner, above do, we have helping verbs. And when we press that, that gives us some of those helping verbs, am and is, and also to. They come up as well. We've also got some question words, which are colored in the purple color, what. We've got the determiners, that. We've got our prepositions in the pink, and then we've got more and not down here and some social words, hello. So there are the keywords on the screen and exactly the same as we did before, I can select a pronoun, I, and I'll say drink. And when I select drink, notice how drink appears, the drink category appears in the same place. I've also got some choice of drinks, juice or water, and these can be customized. Or I can say, go into drinks, and I can say Coke. If I want to take Coke, I'm just going to copy that for a moment. So there's Coke. I drink Coke. If I press drink now and put Coke here, then that means I will have Coke at one less hit. I can say, what do you want to drink? And I can say, drink Coke. I could say, what do you like to drink? I like drink coke what do you want to do i do and then i could have things that i like to do how do you feel i feel feel sad now if it were me at this stage if i was in a good mood i would just say happy if i was feeling a bit grumpy i would just say sad oh why do you feel so sad and you might then look for an opportunity to expand upon that. But here at this point, I can say I feel and I can press the feelings and I can go into some more feelings here. And I could say hot. I feel hot. It's hot today. It's not. So you can see how that we're trying to minimize that navigation. We're still keeping it within those language stages. Two to three. Uh, we're in language stage two to three at this point but you see how we're still getting access. Here I've got the word not, and I can say not feel sad. However, if I'm now using this word, I can say I, and notice that don't has appeared. I don't feel sad. So it is helping me and forcing me to be grammatically correct at that point. There is a way, if you do not want that to happen, not that this is a teaching video, but what I can do is I can edit the don't and I can swap its location so it appears elsewhere. And what that does, I can then say, I not feel 
sad. I don't feel sad. So it's very easy to move things and swap things around by using the, the right click with a mouse, which you can plug into a device and either edit, cut, copy or paste. It's a great feature within our software. And by plugging a mouse in, you don't have to be in any edit mode to do that. Notice that we've gone to 28 and because we are on 28, we've now got more buttons available to us. Notice the names have appeared and we've now brought the names out onto the home screen, something that wasn't typically there within earlier versions of EasyChat Core. But people said, we want to have names more readily available. They also wanted to have the availability that each page would close or have the hold function that would allow them to press the button. So I can say here, hold, foot and ear. And I can go to different parts of the body or in fact, I can go to the pain scale and say that I have a pain. What's your pain level? Eight. Notice it's held the page. Can you move up a little? Is that more? No, it's a two. So it gives people a nice pain scale option. They can go back to the topics or they can go back to the home. So we've all really thought about navigation. Samantha, you're saying, I like the idea that can help to become grammatically correct, easy to use. And that's something that we wanted. Out of the box, we wanted it nice and simple to use. Here, I've got the word play. When I press play, notice that the plus S appears in exactly the same place and it can now say plays. I can say put, puts. I can say, I can go in here. Now I've got no pronouns, no additional pronouns coming in here. When I go into my topics, notice that these pronouns and the position of these buttons are one step further than they were in the, in the 15 location. I can press the pronouns and I can say, she feel, feels, and then I can go into the feelings or I can either go into my topics and feelings and say hot. So there's lots of different ways that you can use it. However, if somebody is at that level, I would try and minimize that navigation. And the way I'll do that is by pressing our toolbox button, vocabulary wizard, into core 36, and would say, let's try the 36 location, because simply that's bringing out even more vocabulary. I hope what you'll see by using 36 is, you look at it and say, actually, it looks very similar to the 28. We've tried to keep that look, that consistent look and feel, a familiarity that you're using an easy chat core vocabulary, but actually it, as it's growing, we're trying not to make that, those huge differences in the layout. We are a company that endorse and support motor planning. But obviously, at this point, when you increase the location sizes, you are going to be changing those patterns slightly. That said, if you do transition upwards, then we try and keep things in a very similar location and consistent layout. Notice that your topics will always be in the top right corner. Your clear display will always be in the bottom left corner. Your pronouns will always be situated over on the left hand side of the screen and the verbs will often be layered in this format. Your describing words will always sit on the top row, as will your uh, helping verbs and some of the adjectives there. So there is a consistent look and feel. I feel sad. You feel sad. It feels, now notice how that's starting to predict. It feels sad. And I can go into here, she, feel, feels, and I can get that to hold on that page if I want to, so we can get that button to hold. So somebody says, actually, if I'm saying feels, I can get that to hold on that page, so we can get that to hold. Now, I'm going to make a slight change to that from default, but I just wanted to let you see that. Just let me make a quick note. Okay. So we've got the same layout in the 15 location. We've got the topic vocabularies and the things I show you are consistent in each of the vocabularies. I'm just going to introduce you to some new features. Here we've got some message features that appear and these are quite useful. 
So I'm going to go back to the home screen and clear my screen out. So if I want to have a pre-stored message, I can go into topics and this bottom row here is allocated to pre-stored messages. Now, my device isn't speaking out because I'm presenting it. But if I press this button here, it says my device needs charging. And it defaults back to the home screen. I have something to say. I like it. Now, these are just suggestions, but obviously you can put your own messages in here. There is some crying and laughing sounds. So if you're using the a cappella voices, these devices do have a synthesized cry noise and a laugh noise. And it's a really nice way to do it. So I've got somebody who I've been working very closely with and she's been using the crying and the laughing and the hand clapping during the NHS clap on a Thursday evening. And there is a video that I'm hoping to get up on Facebook, although obviously it's now finished. I think there was a nice video that I received. Notice that the nouns are here because we didn't put the nouns in on this page. We decided to still leave them out on the 36th location. Some people like that. Some people don't. You could say, actually, I'm going to move the help verb into a more actions page. So I have to put it into my A to Z and into my H and just copy the help button in here. So now I've got help me. OK, you're missing a step. And you could just bring those nouns if you wanted to from here to here. I wouldn't suggest that, but it is possible to do it. And it's so easy to do it as well. It's just a case of cut, copy and paste. But I think that was a mistake. Yeah, there you go. So I can clear that out and move parts of speech around. So customizing easy chat is an easy thing to do. But again, if you're getting to that point where you need to move things around, you would ask yourself, is this worth doing? Or shall I just try that person on the 45 location vocabulary? And actually, just as a top tip, and I can speak on behalf of Jackie, as well as I know this is Jack, something that Jackie does. But actually, when I'm taking or working with somebody on a vocabulary for the first time, I often like to start with the maximum number of cells on screen and reduce it down. So I might start off with 84 buttons and say, OK, they're struggling with access there. Let me bring them down to 60. Oh, they're doing much better. Let's see how they work on 60. The reason I like to do that is taking somebody from 15 and they do it really well. And you say, I'll take you to 28. Yeah, you're doing that really well as well. So I'll take you to 36. Oh, you're not doing so well on that. I'm going to take you back to 28. And the problem with that is we need something to work on. If we see a problem, we knock it down. Whereas if we see somebody doing better than they did on a previous version, 84 or 60 versus 84, then we're willing to give that a go. And I think psychologically that's more acceptable. So if you're trying somebody, try them on a high number and bring them down. It's much better to work towards something then be comfortable with what they're doing and not work towards something and therefore not give them the developmental potential. I hope that makes sense and I hope that's something that you feel that you would be worth trying or working with. So here I'm going to go across now to the 45 location and again it's a similar look and feel but obviously now we've got all parts of speech coming out here. Again the same thing, I feel sad. I like to, I'll say, go out. And I'll say, with her. So you can see how I'm able to produce a sentence with minimal navigation. And I'm all about snug, spontaneous, novel utterance generation. The ability to create sentences and they don't have to be grammatical those sentences can be telegrammatic i could just say and in fact this was a conversation that i've been having with a number of people who use aac and in fact i was hoping to put a paper in for communication matters conference this year but obviously the conference is unfortunately not going ahead in person Hopefully there will be some online events, but certainly we'll put a paper in next year. And the point I wanted to make was 
when we're using a communication device, people often say to me, can you build a sentence? Can you show me how you'd say, I feel really happy today, how do you feel? I actually might say, I feel happy. Then I might go and say, what? And then think about other parts of speech, and I might go, what about you? And that's a nice, simple way for me to put that message across in as few words as possible. And a good friend of mine and a good friend to a center is, a, is somebody called Peter Zine. And if you don't know Peter Zine, he has appeared on our Facebook and I will be doing some more online videos. Peter averages around 50 words a minute. But actually what Peter does is he uses those keywords. He still speak grammatically correct. But there are occasions where he'll just put in a few key words just to get that idea across. Why would I need to do a help whole sentence? Rather than saying, Jackie, can you come and help me? I might just say, help me. It's quicker. I press two buttons. If I want to please, I can go into social. If I'm not, I could say, will you help me? But again, it just minimizes those number of hits. So Take that away as, as another tip, because I think it's something that we often say, can you produce this sentence? But actually, in reality, think about how you can simplify it. Again, when I go into the topics, just notice play, feel, eat and drink. Play, feel, eat and drink. When I hit topics, toys, feeling, food and drinks. Look at the location, they're consistent. Look at these easy messages that are down here. They're still available to you. We actually have a messages button as well. When I press this, I can save a pre-stored message here. So let me put a message in. I want to say, I want to go out with you and I want you to eat with me. There you go. Nice, simple sentence. It was grammatical. It was produced nice and easily. There wasn't a lot of change. Think about the number of hits and the navigation. Lots of systems expect you to go right down through different layers. And again, I've not had to do that. But I'll say, actually, that's a really good sentence. I want to keep that. So I'm going to go into topics and I can do this as a device user, as an individual. I can go into my messages. And I can say save that message. So I press this save button and I could choose to save it in my home, in my questions, in my school. And we've got extra pages. I'm going to save it here. And I'm saying, where do you want to save it? And any gray button I can choose. So I'll choose this one here. There you go. It's saved that message. I'm going to clear my screen out. And there you go. I've now got it there for future use. If I wanted to put a picture in there, I could. Here we go. I think, oh, I need to send that message or I need to speak it into messages. I want to go out with you and I want to eat you to eat with me. How quick am I able to produce that? And what's great about this is the device user, the individual, the person who's using AAC can do this activity themselves if you want them to have that functionality. There is, and obviously we've expanded the parts of speech. So when I press like, I get light as a past tense, I get ing form as well, and I get the plus s plural. And there is an element of prediction. I can say, I, I'm liking it. I can say, I don't want to eat with you. I can say, I'm not, and notice it stays there, eating with you. So there are lots of quick ways to do it. How do you find this for someone who uses eye gaze? Absolutely brilliant question. Thank you, Abigail. It's a really good question. And actually, with eye gaze, I find that that minimal navigation and that ability to customize and move things in preparation makes it a nice, simple, easy system to navigate with eye gaze. And the more buttons you've got on screen, obviously less navigation you're having to do. 
I did a presentation this morning looking at eye gaze and head pointing. We in fact have a new eye gaze system out. If you haven't done that one already, I'll make sure there are some new dates. Exploring eye gaze and head pointing is a great webinar. And in fact, I did record it this morning, so I will make it available as well. But if that's something you want to attend live and see and ask questions on, then please go to our website, liberator.co.uk, click training and look for exploring eye gaze and head pointing. So I'm gonna navigate now to the 36th location. And again, the more, the higher we go in location size, the more vocabulary we have. Notice that we've got additional pronouns appearing here. Our auxiliary verbs have come out. They're no longer in that top corner and there are more verbs available here. I can say, I want, now notice when I press want, the auxiliary verbs have disappeared and it's now predicting my pronouns. I want her. There you go. I'm going to say, I want to eat with her. I want to eat. I want to eat his. I want to eat with her. And notice how that's minimized. So if I was using, um, if I was using eye gaze, Abigail, on 45 versus 60, there are fewer hits that I need to do to actually communicate grammatically. Notice that those words are coming up as an element of prediction. So certainly if I was working with you and suggesting eye gaze, I would probably say, let's start on the 60 location rather than the 45, depending on the access and how accurate somebody is. Notice that the nouns and other parts of speech are all out here. We've also got phone and computer access. What we found was that at the lower level location, controlling a computer was more difficult. So in fact, we have introduced phone commands from 36 in the 45, the 60 and the 84 location, but we've only introduced computer access at a 60 and an 84 location. It doesn't mean you can't use the computer at those lower levels and we've still got some historic pages that allow people to do that but when you're using a computer and you're going into windows let's say for example then in fact i need to load the computer pages in let me just load those in we now have by the way just showing you what i was doing the reason i'm loading those communication pages or those computer pages in is that we have now separate the phone pages and the computer pages and the reason that we've done that is if Windows or anything changes within Windows or the phone, we can send out those updated pages without affecting the vocabulary. So somebody who's using EasyChat Core 60, we can just send them out their pages. It's an automatic thing. They just need to be connected to the web, to the internet to do that. And it can say new pages are available. Do you wish to load them? Yes and it wouldn't overwrite any existing vocabulary pages. I hope that makes sense. So here now, when I go into the apps, I've got the ability to answer a call, to end a call, to send or receive a text message. I can adjust my volume up and down, and we can do this in the other vocabulary sets as well. I can go into a loud mode that instantly makes it loud, so I don't have to. So watch what happens on the volume indicator here, it's currently set to half. I put loud mode on and it goes straight up. If I go into apps and select quiet mode, it goes very quiet. So it goes into quiet mode and I can just resume that and say reset volume and it goes to an average volume setting. I can go into apps and I can look at my contacts for my mobile phone. Now at the moment, I don't have a mobile phone connected, but if you haven't seen the mobile phone, system it's very well worth looking at we've updated it and what that means is that we now have pictures on your contacts and we have a whole new way of using a mobile phone a very nice way because what it in fact does you can program everything on your phone you don't need to program it on the device any contacts you add to your phone automatically populate and bring those pictures in it's a really great system we have the ability to send text into Word, and I'll show you what that is. But here's my Windows 10 now. When I press it, 
it opens up and says, okay, what do you want to go into? I'm going to go to my web browser and I'm going to use Facebook. All this would typically drop down to the bottom of the screen and the Facebook web browser would be in that blue area that you see underneath. I can't demonstrate it this way, but it would give me the ability to control my web using buttons that I'm familiar with in size. If I want to use the computer outside of EasyChat, then I can press just desktop, and what that will do is take me to the Windows desktop, and I can have a series of buttons around the screen that give me mouse functionality and Windows functionality. Now, I can't show that at the moment, but if that's something you would like to see, I can show it, and I do show it when we do the exploring eye gaze and head pointing webinar. Again, I will send you that link for exploring eye gaze and head pointing. I've just made a note there. I'll send it in your email. The other thing that I want to show you is the ability to send to Word. So let's just imagine that I've written a sentence. I'll do it now. I uh, want to, and again, I'm just going to use this, show you something. Yeah, so I want to show you something that I, so I'm going to go to my verbs, so that I think is good. There you go, I've written a sentence. I want to show you something that I think is good. I'm going to go into my apps. I'm going to go into my easy messages. I'm going to save that message here. There you go, that's saved. So imagine that was my work. And I've carried on talking. I can say, I love you. And I've carried on talking. And somebody says, right, we need you to print that work. Let's have a look. I can go into my apps. I can go into my easy message. I can bring up that message. I want to show you something that I think is good. I can go back and say, send to Word. And what that will do is open up a Word document on screen. It will just display this area. It won't display all this. It's just because I can't show you very well. And what that will do is send that text into a Word document on your device. And then you can simply press print and that will print off that text for you if you're connected to a printer. It's a really nice feature. Again, something I can show you at another time. And very quickly, there is EasyChat Core, 84 location. Again, this has got a huge amount of words, 84 buttons. Don't be put off by it, although there's a lot of words here. It's minimal navigation. And in fact, we've compared this to lots of different vocabularies out there, even including some of our own vocabularies. And based on the number of hits, this is extremely quick, extremely quick for navigation. So there's a, a huge element of prediction minimum navigation, lots of topic vocabulary, the ability to add those pre-stored messages. And like with all the easy chat vocabularies, what's the first thing people want to do is create lots of extra pages. So we've made those pages for you. We've linked them already. All you've got to do is go into that page and customize that page. And that's very quick and easy to do. I can right click, edit, Let's say I wanted to make this a fruit and veg page. I'll go into widgets. I'll look in for food. So let me find foods, fruit and vegetables. And I'm going to say, OK, I'll have apple. Edit another button. Press the next button. Change picture. Apricot. Edit another button. Choose a button. Change the picture. Asparagus. And I'll just keep adding these in. I'm going to go a bit quicker. And I can just add this in and all of a sudden now I'll do that. I've now got those words stored. And of course, all I've got to do is decide where I want to put this page, move it a step closer and put a picture in to represent that. So hopefully you see that it's a lot easier. OK, something else I want to show you are the one hit core boards. But before I do that, I'm going to have a quick look. Uh, Abigail is saying, how many phrase based options are there, please? A lot of iGaze users like a mixture of phrase based and single words. Absolutely, Abigail. So with iGaze, you can certainly go in. You'll notice when I press a core word, let's say like, for example, 
I can get phrases coming off here. So I can say like, hit my phrases, going for a walk. I could say I like, hit phrases, going for a, a playing games. So you'll see that that's one way to generate phrases. Or we do have another vocabulary system called easy chat phrases. And basically what that is, it looks something like this, but you go into each page and it will just give you phrases and messages. So it's less of a high frequency core based vocabulary system and more of a phrase based vocabulary system. It's not as popular, I don't think. People do like this ability. So I might put somebody, let's say, onto 45, hit play, and then have phrases that comes off there. So that can be more popular. But one of the things about Easy Chat and one of the things about Liberator, if you've worked with Liberator, and hopefully, I'm sure, I'm sure I saw somebody there that Jackie is her guru. That's from Fiona. Jackie, um, myself as well, and Mick, but if you've worked with us, you'll know that what we like to do is understand that AAC is very personal and individual. We're not the sort of company that says, there's your vocabulary, this is how you program it, good luck. What we do is we say, okay, we've got some great features in our software, and what we can do is we can make you a vocabulary that will adapt. Oh, you want that feature? No problem. Let me create that for you and give you a starting point. We really encourage people to be trialing our devices. We want you to borrow our equipment and we want you to make sure that it's right. And often when we're setting up a loan device of somebody, we'll often save that vocabulary to make sure that we can give it as a good starting point if and when they get their device. So if you don't see Easy Chat doing something, ask your local consultant. Is that a feature with an Easy Chat? Yeah, we can bring that across for you. No, it's not, but we can put that in for you. So please don't just look at this as out of the box. Think about what else you want it to do, and we will kindly adapt it for you as well. So there are phrase-based vocabularies. Another thing I want to show you that was hugely important within Easy Chat is if anybody attended Karen Erickson's presentation at Communication Matters, it was very powerful. It was about developing literacy skills, and I'm very much about developing and supporting literacy. Rather than storing lots of topic-based vocabulary pages, maybe it's an opportunity for somebody to develop literacy. So there are spell pages available within Easy Chat Core. And within Easy Chat Core, and phrases, those spelling pages are available. We offer a range of spelling pages. Do you want QWERTY format keyboard? There it is. Do you want us to change that keyboard? And you can, in fact, do this. You can go to the keyboard choices. Oh, you want an ABC yellow background keyboard? No problem. We'll apply that one. And now when I go into spell, it's a yellow keyboard. Oh, you want a lowercase keyboard in yellow? No problem. We'll go to easy setup. We'll go to keyboards, we'll press lowercase, we'll go ABC yellow lowercase keyboard. Do you want to be able to customize that keyboard and add in your own word prediction? No, you wanna make it more basic. That's fine, we can do a basic keyboard or we can do a more advanced keyboard. I'll load the advanced one in. And now when I go into spell, it's a lowercase keyboard, ABC format, and it's got word prediction and abbreviation expansion and you may notice a button called Word Finder. Word Finder is finally available with an Easy Chat, and that gives you the ability to find where a word is. So if I'm looking for a word, let's say the word go, I can type in G O, press OK, and it'll say, OK, go is stored as a one hit on your home screen, but it's also stored in the places page and it's available here. Better than that, what we can also do is you could say, can you show me where it's stored or can you guide me? Guide me means, and I'll press this one here, I'll say guide me. Guide me means it will highlight the button so you can see it's now highlighting and I have to press it, one button. Now can you see where it is? That's right, you get the individual to press it. That's right, it's there, two buttons. And now can you see where it is? Three buttons. And there it comes up. And it's the same location as where it was here. So there's go. 
or there's go here and I can go spell word finder G O OK and it says there it is show me and it will just accept it and press it for you it says here and um, Louise has asked I gaze and head pointing training is full will you be offering it again or sharing a recording I'll be offering new dates so thank you for letting me know about that so there will be some new dates in there it's become very popular and I will be sharing recordings as well. We will put it onto our website, but if you can attend, it's much preferred because one, you get a certificate, woo! And two, you can obviously ask questions as well. So I'll try and do them. I am also gonna look at doing some evening courses and weekend courses because I am asked to do those as well. Samantha, you've got a question. We have a new student in class who's just started using iGaze. I'll be interested in additional training you may have with regards to this. No problem at all. If anybody has somebody that you'd like us to do work with, we do free one-to-one -one training sessions. We use Teams, we use Zoom, we use GoToMeeting or GoToTraining, and we can connect into the device remotely. And as I said, we're cheap. I offer that completely free of charge. So I'm more than happy to help you out at any time and link in with you. We've also got something called Easy Chat, Play and Explore. Um, I'm going to share this with you and show you what Easy Chat Play and Explore is. I'm going to go in and just load this vocabulary in because I don't have the latest copy available. Let me just have a quick look. Easy Chat Play and Explore is available in PCS, Boardmaker or Widget. And when I load this in, let me just have a quick look. When I load that in, hopefully there's Easy Chat Play and Explore. Now, before I go into this, Easy Chat Play and Explore, I will send you a link to this, it's on our website, is completely and utterly free of charge. That's right, you heard it, free of charge. You can go to our website, you can click on resources, click on handouts and presentations, and you will see Easy Chat Play and Explore booklets and teaching pack, and they are free to download. And there's two ways of using Easy Chat Play and Explore. You can not have an accent device and you can just download what we call manual boards now this is one that we've got printed professionally there are lots of pages as you'll see so in order for you to print that off there are something like 150 pages so most color printers are expensive if you're printing them in work even then it's around six pence a copy i don't know if some people realize that so I take these to places and get them printed and it can cost sort of 35 pounds to get that printed. But what's nice about that is the finish and its robustness and durability, plus I can get it bound. So you can download it and you get this manual, Easy Chat, Play and Explore teaching pack. Um, Sally has kindly put that, press, that link into the chat. So if you want to download those, there is a link there to the handouts and presentations. This booklet, teaches you so what it does and i'm going to just turn my camera around so you can see it a bit better so excuse wavy cameras what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into into easy chat play and explore i'm going to go into my cooking activity let me just get this up in the duck in the teaching pack there is lots of different tips as well so it can tell you or talk to you about modeling so even as a document yourself it's really useful so i'm going to get my camera and you'll see here that I've now got a manual board for cooking. And the layout is consistent with EasyChat. We've tried to give you the layout of the verbs and the pronouns, the prepositions, um, and then some noun words. And what we can do with this is we can use this. Can you see this camera, everybody? Can people see that camera? Hopefully people can. Let's just see. No, nobody can see the camera. Oh, the camera should be showing. Okay, so some people can see the camera, some people can't. That's probably just the setup on your screen. But the idea being is that you can go to, and I'll go to it on the screen as well. If I go to 28 location, oh, I haven't got the right symbols up there. Sorry, let me load in another one. Unfortunately, um, Toby Dynavox have restricted PCS. You can get them on our devices, but they won't allow us to use um, PCS within our computer emulation software 
um, we can only use the widget symbols. It's a restriction, unfortunately, that they've put in place. It's say it doesn't cause any problems you using uh, Easy Chat Play and Explore or PCS on our devices. It just means if you want a program, you don't get to see the symbols on screen. But good old widget, they allow it. So I'm going to go into activities and I'm going to cooking. And there's the cooking board. So if you can see my camera, you can see that cooking board and that cooking board there. I'm just going to bring that camera back up to me. OK. And what this does is this mimics what is on a device. I can either use the book, the manual, and it's a great resource to share with families. And then if I go into the manual itself, there's my cooking page. And, and if you can see my camera, it says, what equipment do we need? What vocabulary shall we use? What to do? What? And it gives you ideas. It says here, cooking is fun, often motivating activity, which offers a variety of sensory experiences. Whilst cooking, it allows us to develop some excellent life skills and it provides us a wealth of opportunities to model great core language. It gives you some sentence ideas to model. It gives you language functions to address, commenting, directing, labeling, questioning. It talks about generalization. So this is a really useful document to use in school. And if you can see my camera, I'm now holding up that play, um, that play and explore manual board in paper format so without a device i could be using this with somebody without even using or having a device and here look i've got lists and page access to lots of easy chat play and explore so it's a really nice setting a really good product to have so you can use that as a low-tech resource download it what's great about this if somebody goes on to use a device in the future They've now got a familiarity that is going to match up with the device and work in exactly the same way. So easy chat, play and explore, go to our website. What that also, what I also wanted to share with you, and if Sally, you don't mind getting the manual board link up as well, I'm going to go to Easy Chat Core 45. All Easy Chat vocabularies have this option. I'm going to scroll through and you'll find a board in there called a one hit core board. In fact, I'll show you as well on my computer. I'm going to open up a web browser. I'm going to go into the Liberator website. And what I'm going to do is bring up a one hit core board. Bear with me. So resources, manual board. There we go. I'll share the screen with you in a second. So what you'll see here is at the moment I'm showing a widget core board for 45 location. So what the idea of this core board is, when you first start with EasyChat, you might want to say to somebody, right, we are going to target the core board, one hit core board, and I'm going to navigate into that for you. So you're going to facilitate that. And here I can just say, I want it. Every one of these buttons is one hit. Notice where we had some of the prepositions or pronouns. These buttons have gone and we've just got some high frequency words. Where is it? I want it. I love you. I want to watch it. Can you see how I'm doing that? It just allows me to use this in a single hit location. And so now what I'm doing is I'm getting that familiarity with the layout of Easy Chat, um, Easy Chat Core 45. The beauty of this is if I minimize this down for you and I bring in my website here, there's the website. Can you see that website? OK, look what we've got here. We've got the manual hit core boards available. You can simply go to our website, right click, save that as an image. And then all of a sudden, you've now got that. You could give that to somebody as a low tech alternative to their device. They may not even have a device right now. And you could say, I'm going to try this with you. And let's laminate this and put this onto your board. There are so many people over the period of COVID-19 that have been online, have taken these boards and are using them as low tech core boards. I've got adults who have had a stroke and they are using these core boards. 
The beauty of this is that if they have to go on to use a device, they've got that familiarity with it still. So now they can do it. So it's a really good way of doing low tech. And another thing about the low tech, if you really wanted to take it that little bit further, I'm going to go back to our website again and say, actually, they're doing really well with this. Can we create a low tech support book to go with that? Absolutely. I'm going to go back up to our website. Look, there's all the low tech boards in the different symbol sets and the different sizes. But if you go to resources and low tech support books, now we've got a great video that's been made showing you how to make a, a low tech core, core book. And if you can see my camera, let's go in. Here I am. I'm on an easy chat core. Uh, easy chat core. Am I using widget? Am I using PCS? Am I using symbol sticks? Am I 45, 60, or 84 location? Am I using the chat devices? Am I using Lampworth for Life? And here I am. If you can see my screen, there's my low tech support book. I like it. I want eat. And now I can scroll through and look for the word eat. So I've got my eat categories coming up here. I can flip my chart, say more, and I can scroll through. There's food, food, cereal. Bring it down. I want go. Do you want to try and spell it? Okay, let's lift the spell. I want go. Oh, you prefer lowercase keyboard? No problem. There we go. Begins with a s. The seaside? No. The shops. So you can see how we can start to use this as a low tech alternative. These, again, are free of charge. You can use them completely and utterly free of charge, go to our website, download those, and they match up with the Easy Chat Core, the Lamp Words for Life vocabularies, and the Word Power as well. Now, lastly, and I say, sorry I've taken a little longer than I expected, I just want to load in and just show you that another configuration of Easy Chat, there is something called Easy Chat Spell. If you've got somebody who is literate, if you've got an adult with an acquired condition, who has retained their literacy, maybe motor, motor neuron disease or a stroke, then we have Easy Chat Spell available as well. And with Easy Chat Spell, it's a great system. It's the same spelling functionality that you find within Easy Chat Core. So it's a very familiar system. Do you remember in Easy Chat Core, we went into the Tools button and we went into Easy Setup? and we change the keyboard, well, we do exactly the same here. I don't think you can do very well with a white QWERTY keyboard. Can you make it yellow? Yep, apply. And now that keyboard is consistent. So I can change the keyboard layout and style very easily. And if I change that keyboard, any programming that's gone with that will carry over. Let me show you something that I can do on here. One of the features that, that our customers told us about was having access to word prediction. And that word prediction is hugely important. Now, many systems have a word prediction system that learns automatically. Ours don't. And I was really disappointed when I was told that that isn't a feature that's ready yet. However, that was a couple of years ago. And what's happened since then is I've met with lots of adults who are using these kind of systems and they say, I don't like it when a system learns a word automatically because if it's profanity, it's coming up on my screen, my children might be able to read it, or it may not be appropriate to be visible. If I'm doing a presentation and my screen's on view, a word comes up that I use with friends, but I certainly don't want it to come up in public. So I want to be able to control my word prediction. I also want you as my support to be able to add that word in for me. I want you to be able to program the device as easily as I can, because I want to be able to control my device. So we took that on board. And I've got um, uh, uh, somebody that I work with, a lady that I know very well. I hope you don't mind me referencing Angela, Angela McCormack. She's online. And I'm going to type in Angela's surname here. 
So I'm going to type McCormack. So I'm going to put a capital M, lowercase c. I'm going to press the shift and have C O R M A C K. There's Angela's surname. And notice it hasn't come up in the word prediction. It says, Angela's not here. I don't know Angela McCormack's surname. Actually, I'm going to add that in there. I can now press this add WP button or word plus button. It will take McCormack. It will say, is that the correct spelling? Just check it for me. Is that right? It will also give me the keyboard and the size that I'm already using. So it's maintained 60 location. OK, add it in. And now I can go M and there's McCormack. It's added it in for me automatically. I can say Angela. And Angela isn't a name that's in there. So I'll add that word in. Add. I can do this as easy as somebody can do this if they were the device user. So they don't have to go into any particular edit mode. And I like that from a support point of view. I have people say, oh, well, I'm just going to add loads of names in for him. I'm going to add the places he likes to go. Because then, are you OK with that? Now, please don't add any swear words in there. I don't like, want my kids to see that. I'll spell those. That's brilliant. So the person is now in control. I can add abbreviation expansions in. I work with a lady called Kathleen Kent. She's actually based over in Ireland and she um, uses easy chat spell. She won't mind me referencing her because she likes people to hear about her. She's an amazing woman. She uses abbreviation expansion to the extreme. She has over 300 in there. And let me show you what they are. I'm gonna put here TFC. It's not Tennessee fried chicken. I'll go next and I'll add in thanks for coming. And I'm going to go OK. Now I'm going to add another one back in here. Add abbreviation. ORS. And I'm going to say, oh, sorry. All right, I see. It's something I say. OK, OK. Now, I'm going to be you're going to be chatting away to me. Yeah, so blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to go. All right, I see. It's something that I would say if you talk to me. So you'll explain. All right. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. It's just those little things that we give in conversation. And so it allows Kathleen and others in this case to maintain that conversation without having to focus on predicting or saying that. Thanks for coming. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming, Mark. She can go TFC space. Thanks for coming, Mark. Now, again, my name's not coming up here, but it will do. We do have a frequency keyboard, TFC. Angela. Now, what the frequency keyboard does, and I'll say Angela and Mark. Look where Mark is. It's already appeared here. Look where McCormack is. It's swap locations. And although that's quite a quick jump over a period of time, it becomes much more stable. At the moment, it's learning what I'm doing. And I'll say Mark. There you go. So that's easy chat spell. And just like the other easy chat vocabularies, it's available in a range of vocabulary sizes. I can go to the 36 and I can use a keypad, a keypad spelling. So I can say, watch this. M, look what words come up. I've gone into a completely different vocabulary. So come on, you've added those words in. I'll take it across to this one as well. I've hit the letter M. Now, when I hit the letter M, it's got a P in there and we've got some P messages. So I can say, please, could you help me? I can say, I love you under two hits as a message. Or I can go I space L O V. Oh, sorry, I've missed it. Love. So you see that prediction, I hit the space, but it says, come on, you predicted it, I'll give it to you. I'm gonna say, I love Saturday, watch this. I've put a space in, I'm gonna go S, 
A, T, now watch this, A, D, A, I'm spelling it wrong, oh, D, A, Y. And it's saying, do you mean Saturday? It's giving me that as a prediction. I love Saturday, there you go. So it's still predicting it for me. So if I wanted to, I can go into my easy setup keyboard. I'm gonna have a QWERTY format keyboard for my 36 location and I can change it. So it's very easy to customize. So easy chat spell, easy, a great for an adult to quiet. And the last one I'm gonna show you, oh, wrong button, uh, change, sorry, wrong button again. Advanced change configuration. I'm going to go into easy chat words. Now, this one isn't particularly popular. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but if you've got somebody who is literate, they simply prefer to spell and use easy chat spell vocabulary. Otherwise, you can have easy chat words, which is exactly the same as easy chat core, it's just not got the symbols in there. And I can say, I feel good. So it's the same vocabulary system. The topics are still there and the topics do have the symbols in because they would be so hard to find those words. But most people I show this to, if they've got literacy, they prefer to use easy chat spell. The same with easy chat phrases that I was talking about before. I'm gonna load easy chat phrases in. And this is the final set or family of vocabularies. Here's easy chat spell coming up. And when I go into that one, this is the home page. Here are your pre-stored phrases. I want to eat chocolate. Back to the home screen. I like to eat banana. I want to stop. And then you can go into pronouns. I don't like to go garden. So it's a pre-stored phrase. I can still go into my scroll and find my core words and access my core words if I want to. But primarily, this system is about using a phrase-based system. You want to chat? There's a chat. Stop it, please. So that's easy chat phrases. I hope you're excited by Easy Chat as I am. It's been a great development over the last five years, and I'd sincerely like to thank anybody that's provided that amazing input into developing and learning Easy Chat. If you want more information or want to know more about Easy Chat, go to our website or contact your local Liberator consultant, and they would be more than happy to help. Thank you so much for watching this and so much for learning about EasyChat and I hope it's something that you'll want to use in the future.